So give a big round of applause for our first comic, Mr. Harris Smith! Hi. I'd say I'm a anti-Californian. I don't surf, I don't say dude, and my boobs are real. <laughs> you can tell by <laughs> you can tell by my long hair, my bloodshot eyes. I smell kind of funny. You're right to assume that yes, I do take a lot of naps. <laughs> and I'm not Thor, but I do have the body of a god. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have a job. I, I'm an artist. Ladies, looking at YouTube. Um, I have a job. Uh, I'm an artist. Well, sort of. I remove graffiti in the city of San Clemente. How many of you knew that San Clemente was a graffiti hotbed? Raise your hands, everybody. That's right. The one question I get asked on my job all the time is, hey, you doing community service? <laughs> I, I don't know why. Maybe it's the orange jumpsuit. Um, I, uh, I work Mondays through Fridays, and I had to ask my boss if I could work weekends, you know, to pay for my extracurricular activities. Speeding tickets. Um, <laughs> I like to drive fast. Um, sometimes I can't remove all the graffiti. Like they have these electrical boxes with beautiful artwork on them, and people come up and they tag them. It's my job to remove it. But the chemicals that I use are too strong. But I was told that there's a special formula on them called frog juice. Now, frog juice helps you remove the graffiti without hurting the artwork. Nice. So I was told to go and remove the graffiti, but then I get another phone call. The phone call says, no, 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 don't remove the graffiti. Why? The frog juice doesn't help you remove the graffiti from the electrical boxes. It protects the electrical boxes with the artwork from UV rays. Oh. What? <laughs> They're putting sunscreen on electrical boxes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Only in California are our electrical boxes pampered. Can you believe that? <laughs> hey, 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 at least we know one thing. They won't get melanoma cancer. <laughs> uh, I go to a lot of uh, music festivals, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I went to this one festival called the Hootenanny. Now, the Hootenanny is rockabilly music. Rockabilly, they dress for the occasion. White t-shirt, jeans, and slick back hair. You know, greasers, or white trash. And uh, the female version of this is whorebilly. By the sounds of that, you're surprised that exists too. You see, the whorebilly is, she's got a tight dress, ratted up hair, and red lipstick. She basically looks like a 50s pinup, only except she has a parasol. Parasol, when translated into English, means crappy sunblock. I, I want to meet the person whose idea was, hey, I got a great idea. Let's give these 50s pinups a brightly colored Asian umbrella. Brilliant! <laughs> now, I, now, my friend and I were like, we, we can't stand out. We got to dress the part. So my friend, he went in a white t-shirt, jeans, and I went as a whore billy. <laughs> Good days! I can pull it off, can I? <laughs> Which uh, makes me think of music. Um, I love Bob Marley, he's one of my favorite musicians. Did you know that when Bob Marley died, they found over 26 different species of insects in his hair? In his hair alone. I thought you there was evolution going on up in there. <laughs> Bugs were sucking his blood or getting high off secondhand weed, <laughs> smoke. And uh, I was just thinking, whenever you get bit by a bug, it's always a negative thing. What if it was a positive thing? Like you get bit by the Bob Marley bug. You know how you can see the Bob Marley bug? It's got little dreads, got a little rasta hat. When it flies by, it goes, hey man, I'm so buzzed. <laughs> and I bet you, if you get bit by the bug, this is what happened to you get the munchies real badly. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh shoot. Oh man, I really like reggae music. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, you get a bad Jamaican accent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I
travel a lot. My parents who are here tonight. Thank you, mom and dad. Um, I travel a lot. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. for parents. Yeah. Some of them paid for this. Um, I travel a lot. My parents, God love them, they take me everywhere. I've been to Germany, England, Ireland. Oh, Ireland. I was fresh off the plane in Ireland, which is basically, I had jeans, American t-shirt, American beanie, and thick American sideburns. Oh yeah, thicker than the ones I have now. And I go to the customs agent. I slide my passport under the bulletproof glass. The customs agent looks at the passport, looks at me, and he says, Hey, the 1870s called. They want their sideburns back. <laughs> <laughs> when what I think he meant was, hey, nice sideburns there, faggot. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, you come across friendly people, and he was a very friendly person. I came across, um, I was in England, and I was drinking heavily that night. I know, do I look like a drunk? <laughs> Thank you for saying yes. Um, so after a long night of drinking, I had to go back to my hostel. And I was like, I need to pee really badly. But I can't make it to the hostel, it's a mile away. So I decided I'd go through this park. And I'm running through the park, running through the park. And I find this bush, and I'm like, alright, this bush is away from the cops, I'll be fine. So I find the bush, I unzip. Oh, sweet relief. Then all of a sudden I hear a noise. There's a dude! I'm peeing on a dude! I'm scared right now. I don't know what he's gonna do. He may be a bum, he may hurt me. Oh, shit! So then the bum looks down at me. I look up at him. Uh, he just goes, Bruh. I zip up and run out of there. Now I'm glad because I hate to be him the next morning. Uh, uh, blimey! Blimey! Uh, blimey! Hate Americans. <laughs> uh, I had a buddy, buddy of mine and I were getting high in this uh, park in Amsterdam called Bondel Park, beautiful park, and he was in a wheelchair. I'd push him up this hill, now I'm stoned, high as a Georgia pine, and I had to push him up this hill, and I was a little bit out of it, and the top of this hill is a street. So I'm getting to the top of this hill, and all of a sudden I see a hot, a, a hot Amsterdam chick, I'm like, whoa! Pushed him right into the street. Oh no! Thank God that Vespa saw him. Not the truck. Yeah. <laughs> you can carry some strange things when you're traveling. I was in Japan and they have cigarette vending machines. Now, in the cigarette vending machines, they have a particular band of cigarettes called cancer sticks. <laughs> wow, talk about truth in advertising. <laughs> so I bought a pack, not for myself, I'm not a smoker. I gave it to a friend of mine. My friend was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> These are the strongest smokes I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> rawr, rawr. <laughs> That's right, she had a tracheotomy. <laughs> I was in, you know what else comes out of vending machines in Tokyo? Used panties. Oh. Yeah, used panties! <laughs> that came up with that. I saw a businessman come up to a machine, put it in there, take out the triangular cloth and put it to his mouth like it was the greatest smell in the world. Ah, I had a professor once that would smell books the exact same way. Now, when he smelled the books, he smelled it like it was the greatest smell in the world. Now, he was really excited and it's 8.30 in the morning. I'm not awake, nobody else in the class is awake, but he's jazzed and ready to go. I'm like, this is suspicious. So I go up to his book, and it's a little bit dusty, but with a white powder on it. I'm like, no way. And then I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, I don't think he was smelling the books. I think he was doing a line before class. <laughs> Genius! <laughs> Back to the panties. So who would, who would, uh, who would buy these? Who was the entrepreneur who said, we need this in the market? Yes, yes. Like, is there varying degrees, like used, slightly used, very used, Kardashian used? Oh. I love that laughter, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've been such a great crowd. I just want to point out one thing. Um, most comics, they leave you with a dirty joke, like that last one. Now, I'm not going to do that. 
because I respect you. But I just want to, a uh, round of applause, this is your first comedy show. Round of applause. Yeah. I'm glad I'm your first. <laughs> was it as good for you as it was for me? Probably not. I'm a selfish lover. <laughs> this is a new, new joke, so I'm gonna read it. No, that's bad, sorry. Um, <laughs> all right. Three bears are returning back to their cottage, and they see that the door is ajar. They're scared. Mom bear, Papa bear, and baby bear run into the house. Mom bear goes into the kitchen. Mom bear says, somebody's eating my porridge. Papa bear comes in and says, somebody's eating my porridge. Baby bear comes in from the other room. I don't know what y'all are talking about, but somebody stole the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a wonderful audience. Oh.